today we're going to be wiring some lights on the Coleman CT200U mini bike. Okay, so this is my build that I've been working on pretty much all summer. And right now I'm adding some lights, but I'm having some issues with the wiring. This is the headlight I got for it. I didn't, I didn't want to weld to the frame of the bike, so I took the front rack off it and I used the existing uh, fender bolt to mount the light to it. This is a tractor supply light. It's a solid aluminum casing. Um, two of the light bulbs are already burning out of it. It's brand new. It's, it's 30 watts. No, it's not 30 watts. It's uh, 15 watts. And I think it was like 2 or 3 amps. So anyway, it's not, it doesn't draw too much power, and the goal was to wire it to a toggle switch. But I am currently having wiring issues on this Tillotson, so it's kind of on hold right now. Alright, so I showed you the front lights. These rear lights are from Meyer. They are... Uh, clearance lights. They were about four bucks a piece. They have a single hot wire coming out of them and they ground to the frame once you screw them on. I took some steel plating, cut them to size, then I rounded the corners with a bench grinder and marked the holes and then I used some uh, 7 16 lock nuts and uh, bolts for it to keep it falling off it is plastic so you gotta be careful tightening these lights down because when you use thread them in you're actually tapping the plastic so you gotta be very careful in doing it and work it back and forth so you don't crack the plastic and then from there they're just tech welded onto the frame all right I'm gonna pop the casing off one of these bulbs so we can show you what they look like and what we got going on inside of them. There isn't much, but just for the hell of it. Well, as you can see, we got the light bulb there. Then we have the hot wire going to the bulb and this metal strip right in here, that's the ground. So when it's bolted to this steel plate right behind here and welded to the frame, it's grounded to the frame. So you don't need to run the ground wire. These bulbs are really cheap when they come in here, so I recommend replacing them if you do buy them. There we go. Okay, so when I got this motor brand new, the stock key switch did not work at all. Uh, that's it right there. So, what me and my dad did is I picked up a push button switch. It's all took apart right now, but this is what we used for the starter to start the motor. And we wired that in. But one of the problems was is the charging coil never charged the battery when I was plugged in either. So after looking at the schematic on my phone, I noticed there's one or two wires um, that I accidentally thought we were ground and I hooked up wrong. So I fixed that and I didn't mess up my charging coils or nothing, they still work. So I fixed that wiring and then I decided to just take another look at the faulty key switch here. Okay, so as you can see, this is a starter solenoid right next to the starter. Um, this is the charging coil wire, it's a brown and red stripe on this side. It's gonna go all the way over here and it's going to go into the key box and I believe it's one of these two wires that's where it's connected to. Um, this isn't wired to a switch, it never was to begin with. Uh, if you look at the end of the cable there's no evidence of it being soldered at all. Right down here is also um, the charging coil wire right where it actually comes from the motor. Um, I'm trying to get a better angle of it. This one, this one right here, it comes on the motor. It 
comes through this connector. And then it also travels up into the key box. So it's one of these two wires here is what's fucking me. And it goes from the circuit protector to that switch. And since the switch is not working, I don't think the current is getting to my battery. And that's fucking up my lights. And that's stopping me from charging my battery. I had no problem with my rear tail lights. It was just only the front one that was causing me some problems. I don't have a lot of wire, so I know I should be using red for the hot. But this is the hot wire for the tail lights right here. And this red one's the hot for the front light, and this is the ground for the front headlight as well. And I had them wired to this toggle switch right here, and everything was okay. Um, the rear lights were working perfectly fine with the switch, but for some reason the switch, uh, when it was off, my headlight would be still on, but it was dimmer than when it was on. So it was on both ways to get dimmer in one position. So right now I'm taking apart my whole wiring deal and I'm starting from square one again. Um, I don't know what's going on, but I'm uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can fix it. My buddy Matt has a Tilton T12 just like mine on his go-kart, so I'm gonna borrow his go-kart, take his key switch apart, and see where his wires are connected to, and see if I can find where that missing wire goes inside my key box, and maybe I can get my stock key to work, because it never did from the factory. I never played with that one wire. There's no evidence of it being soldered to anything. So, hopefully, I can learn something from looking at his. I actually copied the schematic down for this, so I don't have to look at my phone when doing it. So this is what we got going on right here for the schematic. Um, missing a little bit of information on the engine switch right here uh, for my front headlights and the taillights I added this right here and the rest of this I directly copied it from schematic exactly how it was so hopefully when I look at my buddy's go-kart I can get a better understanding of what's going on and then uh, I might be able to add the, some of the missing wires to the schematic that's uh, not making sense. I'm actually quite disappointed with this light right here because it's supposed to be 900 lumen light and 15 watts and this was going to be perfect light for it but only two of the LEDs work um we've now my battery is actually probably dead right now so uh, it's not turning on all right I guess it's not dead okay I tested it and it's working I don't know what was taking me so long all right so that's what the light looks like Pretty hard to tell in the picture. Oh wait, never mind. You can see that half the LEDs aren't even working. Um, still pretty bright, but I'm still not impressed with this light. It's I don't know. I just don't understand. It's stupid. All right, so I'm gonna end this video here. So if you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Welcome back everybody. So, to continue on with the video I was doing, uh, I made a little bit of progress. Uh, this is all I got for lighting right now, so I'm gonna have to bear, got to bear with me, but I got my buddy Matt's go-kart over here. He's got the exact same Tilson 212 that uh, I do. Electric start model. So, I brought his go-kart over here so I could take apart uh, the key box and study the wiring and try to fix mine. Okay, this brown wire here is part of the charging circuit. Um, and this is a brown wire with a red red stripe on it. And both these wires are going inside of the key box right here. Um, this is the circuit protector right here. Right behind here we have the actual key switch. And right here we have my push button start switch that I was using because it wasn't working for some reason so I fixed that and I'll show you what I did to do that okay so 
looking at this key the key box right here you see that brown wire with the red stripe on it well mine had two wires going to that one solder connection and the one looked like it never had any sort of a contact on it like it's never been soldered to it so I opened up the key box and one of the wires was disconnected right there so there's two brown wires red stripes going to that one connection uh, right there so I cut part of the wire and spliced in the other brown wire and that's got my key switch working I got the battery hooked up again so I can test my electric start and this is kind of where I'm at Batteries are really low, and it was making noise a little bit ago, but it's not now. All right, so you can hear that. We do have the switch. Yeah, so that's good. We do have the switch engaging the starter now. All right, and I also took back the old light to tractor supply, and I picked up a brand new one, exact same one, because uh, the other one had three LEDs that burnt out, got the plug right here, uh, little mounting bolt, there should be another little baggy bolt somewhere, but I don't know exactly where we're at, but we don't need it. I really wish I would have cut this end off of the light, so I could have had both ends of the plug. Uh, I kept this side of the plug on the other light, and I kind of wish I would have cut this side off now. So, theoretically now that these wires are hooked up, my charging system should be working now. So I should, uh, once I get my battery charged up enough to start the motor, I could pull start it, but I'm going to charge it up before I do this. Um, I should charge the motor, and then I should be able to hook up my lights. As I said in the early part of the video, I just took the front rack off it and then mounted it there where the bolt would go to hold onto the fender. And if... I need to aim it down a little bit more and it kind of starts lighting up the fender and kind of not going where I want to. I'll add like an inch of washers or a little spacer in between it so that way I can get the clearance I need to aim it properly. Yeah, so the cool thing is I don't have to make the other side of the connector because I already got the old plug, got the longer wires soldered into it right here. Um, I still got my rear light hot wire connected because the rear lights were working fine it was just the front one that was a problem and part of the charging system wasn't working another reason when the charging system wasn't work when I got this motor this is gonna sound pretty stupid I thought this black wire right here was a ground it is not a ground this is a hot wire for the charging system I believe and you're supposed to put it on the solenoid I did not know that idiot for not doing it I should have done it I don't know why I didn't I, I guess I was just in a rush to ride so I guess now that I got this this key switch assembly working right I'm gonna put this back cover on this little piece is a little bit tricky to get in here um we got this little rubber piece down here that is you're gonna slide that right in here and that's gonna stop the water from getting in here and you got a little screw that you're going to thread it right into there to tighten it on. Come on. All right, now I'm gonna take this nut and bolt off, and then I'm gonna put this bolt in there, and then I can attach this light to the front fender of the bike. It's a 10 millimeter bolt right there, and underneath is a 13. And then for this bolt right here, uh, 13 millimeter half inch will suffice. 
using the high quality tools today. We're out in my dad's garage, so we got the good shit. Alright, I got my light mounted up there, and as you can see, the fender's got a slight curve up right here. And I got my f light facing exactly straight this way, and it's straight up and down. So, once I get this system all hooked up, I'll test the light out outside in the dark, and I'm, I'll probably end up tipping it down a little bit, and if I need to raise the light up so I can clear the fender with the light, I'll be able to do that and get good lighting. Got a pretty nice connector in there for the light. Um, locks together so you don't gotta worry about it coming loose. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to say about it. So I guess the plan for tomorrow is um, I'm gonna get to my lawnmower, unhook the lawnmower battery, I'm gonna put this battery on the lawnmower so I can charge it because my battery charger took a shit and I only used the fucker like four or five times so that was kind of pissing me off. Then I need to make sure the charging system is actually charging the battery so my lights don't drain it. And once I verify my charging system is charging my battery, I'll hook up the lights and everything and try to get my switch to work. I got a switch so I can control the tail lights and headlights and turn them on and off. Yeah, so that's the plan. So hopefully everything works out and once I get my lights going, I'll do a video on it and and I'll talk about the total cost of what it costed to put these extra lights on here. Yeah, so kudos to Mr. Matt Red for letting me take his go-kart and uh, taking a look at the wiring on it. That way I can figure out mine. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. If you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Before I leave, I thought this was kind of interesting. Quick little tip to everybody. Do Ducar actually makes these engines. From what I believe, Tilson just rebrands them and sells them.